A 13-9 where TSM takes the lead on this series against Winthrop University. Welcome back, everybody. We just got the chance to watch the map of Lotus. That was very back and forth. And guys, I want to say I watched <laughs> the first pistol round go the way of TSM. I watched a second pistol round go the way of TSM. And because what we've been talking about how teams win even if they lose both pistols, I was actually believing that Winthrop was going to turn it around. <laughs> but then is the bonus that TSM wins and then it's just kind of spaghetti all over it. Things get really messy, Vans, and, and it's just TSM that gets away. I definitely think you're right on calling a couple of spaghetti things here and there, and not only on that last round that was like that winning round that GMD just popped off and just doing aim labs and just s simply popping people with some taps, but it's more on like how TSM was able to really manage around the amount of, of utilities and ults that were remaining for Winthrop University at that 12th and score line to not allow Winthrop to really get value and try to bring this into over time and that's really on it, it tells a lot of how good TSM were able to contain the defensive side and really force Winthrop University to try to do a lot of these not necessarily hero plays but individual plays that's going to be a, the biggest winning condition to put the favor back uh, to their side to their camp to try to win the round and unfortunately, it, it wasn't the case. It was, it was one of those moments where, unfortunately, uh, maybe just like Apoth would say in that EG documentary, he didn't wake up 5% more on the right side of the bed and they just really couldn't shoot back in those important duel fights, which really showed and allowed TSM to, to close out the map. But overall, though, uh, it, it almost felt that if they were able to shoot back in those moments, we definitely would have been continuing to cast this overtime. And I am now unmuted, but that nah, with drop our students, but they got to study up all that offense because they only took two rounds. And I got to say, I think it's off of TSM's first take potential in those moments, shutting down all these ideas and forcing Winthrop to think about plan B, C, D. And that's where some overcooking happened. And wait, uh, what? No, nothing. <laughs> wait, is <laughs> it D? I'm like D site. That sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the new map. No. Stop leaking stuff, Dan Dryad. Oh, There's going to be bad. four sites. Yeah, no, but I think what you guys say is pretty spot on when it comes to what we got the chance to see. I think, honestly, we did get to see those mistakes that Winthrop was making on the first match come through again when it was, you know, from swinging one by one yeah. to moments where they do feel that kind of desperation of we need to win this round no matter what. But then you much rather save some of those resources for that next round, mm -hmm. for those win conditions that for that 5v5 where you have more chances. It did feel like towards the end, I, I could feel a little bit of, of we need to win this. We're kind of close. We had the lead, right? It was 7-5 it was half. Yeah. Then we go into the second one. Things get messy, Vance. Yeah. And I, I don't know. My question is, can they change this around? Can they go back to what they were doing so well for the second match? I definitely think, still think that they can. It really comes down to if if Infiltrator is able to win that op versus op, perfect. That's already one check mark. But the biggest one is, I want to say maybe, even if TSM won that map and won, uh, like what, 13? to 10 or 13 to not 13 to 10 yeah it wasn't still the cleanest valorant that we've seen from the side of tsm either though right like right. remember that round where infiltrator got behind got a stinger kill dropped the pit and somebody got behind and get almost a 2k so there's still um opportunities where winthrop is able to get through these defensive gaps and really punish tsm there was also that that round where sim had a had an op and he went all the way up towards a main and threw a boom bot there was a potential to punish that a little bit better there for for winthrop which would, would have given them an early five versus four so if timing continues to be very good here for for Winthrop University where they could actually punish TSM in these overextending moments then you definitely do have a much closer game and definitely an opportunity for Winthrop to upset that second map on Breeze and yes this was a strength of Winthrop because it was their bat pick but this is also a strength of TSM when they went 13 to 11 against M80 this was a and then to bring right. M80 to that distance shows that TSM were a lot more studied a lot more prepared and had more options of strategy on this map and, and that showed and it's also, again, going back to the pistols, the bonus that we see going for the side of TSM, those little rounds really make a big, big difference, especially mm. with how close it really was. The only point where we felt like it was just slipping through their fingers was on, on the last couple rounds, right? The last yeah. three rounds, four rounds max for Winthrop. So yeah. <laughs> 
Well, of course, yeah. the most important ones. Yeah. But it, the, the point is that it was it was being in very, very close. And now when we jump into Breeze for that second map, things get interesting because then the conversation once again comes through with what is going to be the operator, the rifle rounds as well, and how you see Infiltrator having more of a proactive role on this map where you really need to, as a duelist, mm. Van, to, to, to get the advantage. And not only get the advantage, because Winthrop did it a couple of times, but to be able to close them out. Yeah, and another great opportunity here for Winthrop University because of uh, Lemon Kiwi. We talked about the uh, the coaching staff that's maybe a revolving door, but still has a coaching staff behind Winthrop University and a staff around there in general that, you know, maybe there are some people working behind the scenes of trying to figure out how they could maybe uh, anti-strat or perfect a composition that would be very good for them, for their type of play style on Breeze and potentially allowing that to win against a play style of TSM that likes to play a map of Breeze. We haven't seen it in Challengers, but I think I do remember seeing Moobs playing some Reyna in the past for Winthrop University on this map. So I would not be surprised if you see uh, a double duelist come out again of Winthrop on a map like uh, like Breeze so that you could actually add more oh, support no. into the Infiltrator op. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't seen uh, Winthrop on this map, but... Uh, I, Why, are you hitting eggs for doubt? What are, what are these faces? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I just I don't know. I think that Winthrop are more comfortable on maps where moves his strength has been on the fade on maps that they have to fall back to, like Sova and KO, like things like Ascent, uh, or or places like Icebox where we see mm. Winthrop play those type of agents. They they lost in like by a lot, thirteen to four on Icebox, thirteen to seven on Ascent. Yes, those are different maps, but I wonder if that's like an agent comfortability and if they have to bring things out like the KO or the Sova on breeze if that may be a weak point for Winthrop. There, there's a couple opportunities here for Windrop to take it to a map number three, but it's really going to depend on how those agents look, if it's going to be that standard, which they've talked about. They like to bring this, those standard compositions to the table. They like playing their own game. Nothing crazy, but it, it's time to see if it's anything oh. new. And actually, oh, oh wait, actually, I'm so happy that you're still here, Dandry, because look at that. They're playing <laughs> double duelist. Maybe it's not arena, yeah. but it's still double duelist. It's not Arena, but but this makes so much more sense. I like to see the Yoru. I like to see the Jet. It's this double duelist trying something new. I like to see this for Winthrop. There's a big potential here, especially when you are able to catch TSM of guard. Let's see if that happens. And Vans, I'm never wrong, so. <laughs> At least I'm technically not out fully like wrong. <laughs> just be, uh, that's how it's going to be. Okay, okay. Just, just leaves me to dry to be like, oh, okay. Maybe you'll just be able to argue with me 40 minutes later, but I'm, I'm still going to hold you onto that one, Dendry. Okay. Well, she's gone, so you're stuck with me. But uh, we, Winthrop, you know, taking a page out of uh, the Glazer's book. Uh, mm -hmm. Zachary played Yoru on Breeze, and they didn't win, but it was. They went 15 to 13, so it was very close for the Glazers in that moment. So kind of picking up some strategy elsewhere. Yeah, and this is actually quite nice to, to have a Euro in the comp. It just really adds uh, a lot of like support slash even entry capabilities with a Yoru. So you've seen um, players like Ange, for example, when they first tried to bring Yoru out on Breeze uh, last year, it was really just try to pop flash and gain space on a lot of mid control on uh, a team like EG. Remember those Pearl days where Ethan was playing a Yoru, kind of like a, a flash agent to support kind of like a Sky, which is also very good on this map when Sky was still very buffed uh, so that I, I think you're able to add a lot of versatility with moves in this lineup for Winthrop University to fight through what GMD currently has in terms of delays with the walls to counter a proto setups and really creating that space with the clones to have the jet go behind that. But we'll definitely see that happen a little bit later on here once they take the defensive side or sorry, attacking side. Now they start on defense here with TSM. They're coming straight out of the gates with a instant push towards this A site. But look at Winthrop University. They've already instant pivoted. Uh, yeah, Tim was trying to be aggressive past the wall. Oh, what a flash! And Moobs just couldn't land the shot. And TSM fire back in every single way. Now it's all up to Jerk in a one versus two. It's not impossible. But now, having just the one shock bolt left. It's just checking to see if there's anyone mid-cut. No, but locks on to poise. Now both in front. Notice the positioning one of his opposition, remaining. but time is running out and TSM take pistol. Yeah, TSM winning another pistol round is actually yeah. huge right now off. for uh, the team over at TSM this time. But I love I love the agent composition changes coming out from Winthrop at the same time, too. I love that we see Jerk on uh, on this Sova. It's not the first time that we've seen Jerk play on the Sova. I still remember, I think it was like 
jerk and even even back then um you know adding a lot of value on on a silva while he was grinding this tier two scene so that works out pretty well that he's going to use it towards his side but tsm i love that after the pulse plan they really tried to fight behind gme's wall to fight towards the spawn when they found no opposition coming out from winthrop that continues to be comfortable to want to continue to play this retake and tsm understands that right away oh. another quick push <laughs> okay moves just like Teleport into the back of the proto. Saw it coming, just had to wait. Picks up the second and the third of proto. He's a sentinel for a reason. He holds it down for TSM. No one will flank on his watch. But TSM, they had this great early entry into A, but how is this gonna go? Gucci and friends have to be more creative. And it's a Zenny flawless for TSM. That's not too bad, right? <laughs> Trying to catch the players coming off the rotates and getting these types of victories. Uh, having even a proto being able to form a couple of these kills too in the role that he's currently playing on this Cypher. And Cypher is very, very viable on this map. Getting the hats out early information too to really get you in great positions on Pulse Plant is going to be very huge here for TSM. So a very, very strong start coming through. Round number three as they have a lower buy. I mean, this is still quite a strong buy that they have in their bonus though. Two Bulldogs, two Rifles, and a Guardian. Yet they still want to plow towards this B site where there's only one player holding it. It's Nasi. And one away from Neural Theft from TSM, so how can they set up a proto for success after a 4k in the last round? TSM dumping all their utility, comfortable on B, but Nazi's just spraying through the wall and gets one? Like that? <laughs> Who cares what the buy is when you got hacks? Am I right? But I'm exactly. actually kidding. TSM <laughs> got the plan down <laughs> and moves, swings with Infiltrator and the fights at cross. Favor TSM two versus one. All up to poise to protect the spike. The spike has been tapped. The cage Love on it. the double swing. So well timed at a win prop. Cage up, three, two, one. You know where the last player is playing. They both swing out to get the kill, and that's where you we were mentioning that value that Winthrop might have to be able to punish players off timings. And it came down not necessarily on that 2v1, on that time that they had for that perfect double swing, but also those moments when they're climbing up here towards this half wall, towards what I like to call Berlin, to get that pick on that side right here. That kill that they got on seven at that pillar is huge, and there was a lot of those in these moments on the retake of Winthrop. So they continue this floor right now uh, and continue to find these good timings off the retakes that they're playing which can find once again a very very close uh second map here uh in our hands and we uh we actually find it interesting i find it interesting rather that we have an outlaw knowing that tsm is going to be in a full gun round and that's the reason why 140 damage onto a proto almost got punished there manages to escape but tsm still wants to bring that value to rush towards his b site it's a flood from tsm through that left wall Able to get the plant down nice and early, spraying through the wall. I guess that's the key to winning. This time it favors TSM. And oh, that Cypher's getting pinged on the other side of the box, and TSM puts some damage into Nasi in that moment. But seven, gonna make sure the swing is well timed. I can't believe uh, Nasi looked away in that moment. TSM in a three versus one. Nothing Infiltrator could do in that moment. Yeah. And you're hoping to get at least that that early pick there, as I mentioned before. If they were able to get that pick onto a proto out towards the window, no matter what, it would have been, a, you know, a five versus four retake to advantage of Winthrop. And that just makes things a little bit harder because after he TPs away, nobody else is playing towards that site. They know that seven was very close to getting an old command, sort of playing outside those trips too, uh, so that Nasi doesn't get those canceled out into the into the pulse plant. So yeah, I mean, uh, the the read was good there for Winthrop University. Just unfortunate that they didn't have the, the right economy to play against that. So this is going to be a very, very big catch-up game for Winthrop University for the next couple of rounds and can continue to be that way, especially now that nobody's breaking darts here at this point either. So that 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 spoils the fact that Moves is trying to get a contact down towards Elbow. Although, eco round for Winthrop, easy plan for TSM coming up towards A. Infiltrator has eyes, or I should say has ears on the A site. And Winthrop ready at the A cut to flood together because you have that low buy. They want to group up as best as they can, but at a distance, TSM are just better. Already have to they spot the Nasty and flip or, or the entry through the door. And TSM haven't lost a single member. It's a Zenny flawless for TSM. The second one. And, that, and that's why I'm saying it's going to be a lot of a 
a comeback game or a catch-up game for Winthrop University against TSM on this map if they can't continue to get these punishments. I mean, look at it. They have finally an, an operator coming into it, and that's a, an expensive, expensive weapon to bring. Three players on hash shields. They have, thankfully, some ults to go behind all of this to potentially turn this into a very good swing, war, swing round rather for Winthrop University. But if they lose this one here, they're back on another eco, and TSM's just going to keep snowballing the economy. GMD is going to be maxed out if they win this round. And TSM are continuing the death ball. We've, they've seen zero split so far. It's just, let's just plow towards the site and they're getting value out of it. So why why not continue this way? Oh, the unfortunate timing of Sim, but at least the proto gets the trade. You got the Hunter's Fury from Jerk to hose out the B site. But TSM are still established. And with this neural theft from a proto, they know where this retake could be coming from as Poise can sneak up onto Jerk. And he's unsuspecting. And TSM could be taking yet another round it won't be a flawless this time but a win's a win a win's a win and you're putting your opponents back into an eco so that is going to potentially give you even a brazilian scoreline at that point with a 5-1 <laughs> close to a 7-1 but you saw the value of the hat coming out right having a proto getting a lot of value on these type of picks you've mentioned it before when we introduced his game he's not only good here on lurk plays but also very good to just swing with the team and playing anchor in the site whenever they need to and he got a nice two or three k out of that one value out of a hat so they get great positioning on a pulse plant and with that university are not only playing catch up on the economy but trying to figure out every single piece of tsm's scaling on these maps they have no information on how to play the pulse plan so far thankfully they will because in the next round in the gun round i don't think you're going to use the dimensional drift now but that's going to be the most important piece to allow for winthrop university to potentially get some room to breathe uh in round number eight uh but if that's going to be the case and they lose around the again then you could just pretty much just call it gg We'll fake out at A and okay, no one is home. Time to cross the ocean, go all the way to B where TSM lost one on entry. It's a good pickup uh, by someone like Nasi, but TSM are ready to fight. Oh, and wow, width drop are pretty low. So these are some important pickups out of TSM. They're only up by one in this moment. They managed to pick up the spike. Moves versus Sim and moves. That is something to help equalize things, but now time no longer on Winthrop's side with the spike planted. Moobs, quiet. No util, just one hoping to get a kill, but it's three for seven to help TSM. And I, I, I was, again, very, very surprised. I wouldn't say confused. I'd, I'd like to say surprised more that they decide to use the dimensional drift uh, whenever they thought they had position on that B side because yes, you had one player from Nazi that was under heavy pressure out towards Berlin, but at the same time when Infiltrator, or Infiltrator sorry, got a kill off Bladestorm, they said, oh, let's take the advantage. We can maybe try to get some sprays with me going through the drift, but what are you going to try to spray with? More knives? Oh, well, like, and also you have uh, Nazi, I think, with only a sheriff on that round. Like, how can you actually cap Capitalize off the uh, dimensional drift that moves currently brings back within the site. You can't really regain that space. So he just becomes a, a, a human clone with no value behind it. Uh, at least he was able to get one kill, but the objective of, the, of that round was try to get the defuse through and he was the last player remaining coming out of the ult. So that's unfortunate that, like I said, it could have been a very important ult they could have used in this next round, which they won't have. So now the timeout is, is being utilized to say, okay, we don't have this ult to work with. And TSM has every single round and pretty much in a plan, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, so far in this half. So yeah. they have to find value to try to fight towards this A main. Infiltrator finally has a glass cannon op. This might be a great opportunity to finally op towards that A main where they're doing that recon dart dash there from Sim and from uh, Poised. But the flash is not going to be as potent as a KO flash in front of shops. But they're still going to try it. So mm -hmm. let's see if they get value out of this with moves. No, who is potent? TSM. Call them BSM, but they're deciding to go to A this time. Because, yeah, ASM. you're absolutely right. That one's ASM. <laughs> TSM, when they enter site, it's hard to retake it from them. Sometimes it's through uh, annoying shots through the smoke. Sometimes it's Sim, who's just been so deadly this map. TSM off to a good foot, but moves. He's been trying to make all the plays happen with the Yoru. Now that corridor is a threat, and so is Sim. Getting the third one this round. Now it's gonna see who is still lurking in this hallway. Spike planted for TSM. Winthrop only have two alive. 
Not a huge disadvantage, but they don't know where Sim could be. They've already made his way through the back, and Sim knows that they have to expose themselves out in the open where T Sim just has to swing at the right moment. We heard him stomping, and Sim with the ace! Dude, I, and I just love that voice line from uh, from Jet, ba -bum, ba -bum. by the way, when she does that, yeah. Okay, so disadvantage here of the compositioning you have as well from Winthrop University, right? When you actually have a KO instead of a Yuru, I mean, you saw that flash, it still brings value. It does the same thing as the KO when you're trying to pop flash over that. But what happens here, the same thing that TSM does when they get into the site is they'll use a recon dart from Poise and they'll even flash from Seven, which does not allow for you to get a good pick off the Jet Op. And if you dash away, what can the Yuru do? TP away, but there's no KO Molly or anything to delay the rest of the push coming through. So it still allows TSM to get an open site if um, Winthrop University are not able to get the instant pick off the off. And this is the name of the game so far. Already, I just finished my sentence. We have a plan. <laughs> like, ASM too activated. Easy. Too easy. Oh, but moves on the flank, though. Will uh, have their position revealed thanks to the uh, trap wire there by the cipher. So, TSM, no. Someone wants to be invited to this party. A proto is going to do their best to hold down. TSM win the front line too. And no boops is like, hey, I, guys, I'm here too. Does not matter. TSM on an absolute tear. Oh. Silver lining oh, was an eco. For me. <laughs> Like disappointed dad sigh right there. Yeah, I mean, I'm at that age, you know. I am at that age now. <laughs> you literally money. are a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. But but yes, uh, and unfortunately, it, it just, the sigh is there because they, they I see the, the vision that they're trying to bring out here for Winslow University to really try to fight against TSM's aggression and it, it's not working out. And look at them. It, it comes down to dis desperate times now. You're trying to do hero plays. Look at this anti-flash position from Infiltrator and he's just holding towards the angle and he's hoping to get one. Bait and switch and you're trying to hopefully get a pick. And the Aljuan's going to clear him out. Playing nope, this goal is such a risk out of Infiltrator and I don't even know if the Aljuan saw him and... I think Infiltrator was worried. He's suppressed, so he decides to leave. This and down. looks towards mid-cut. Picks up the first kill for Winthrop. A TSM, or maybe the second kill, I should say, is a TSM very weak on the A entry. Finally getting pushed back. It won't be a free plan after all. Yeah, that was actually nice to have a couple of players coming through as well and finally hitting their shots too, right? Long-range battle you saw. And that really uh, didn't allow TSM to get inside the site. And even if they did, Infiltrator potentially could have had another one uh, to help Ooh. his teammates. But he just got discovered oh. here. Oh, the elbow is exposed. And it goes one for one. Oh, no. Number advantage for Winthrop. At least reading A, but using that clone to stomp away. And uh, A draws the attention of TSM. A good bait. And Gucci picks up the kill. And GMD, will we see TSM's second round loss in this entire half maybe left. tsm are beatable after all I copium winthrop and well really moves trying to work more, with gucci nasi maybe has to take a more creative angle at the hallway gmd's taking a lot of space looking past the box turns and burns on oh, the gucci no. and it's on to moves he's got the pit and the pits gmd's seconds, trying yeah. to clutch thankfully there's a hat thankfully there's a hat oh bald buff Nasty's jumping away from the pit. That's a tough one. He ran out of bullets. GMD has a very sturdy pyramid to hide on the other side of, and we'll be able, as soon as the spike gets tapped, GMD can swing. But what is the mind game? Nasi patrols the outside of the pit. Knows maybe where GMD is. Nasi, 5,000 IQ on that one. Gets the defuse for Winthrop. It was so close, too, because GMD was about to look towards that side. And as he did, Nasi what went into you? his POV and he just crouched under the bullets. That was yeah. so unlucky there for GMD. But oh, my God, was it doable there. As soon as I saw a three versus one and it was 15 seconds of breathing room, I was like, dude, he's going to he's going to get a timing after after these two kills and getting a pit, which unfortunately wasn't really for him. It's it's hard to play a pit at that position where, you know, if you try to get between the pyramids, you're you're basically making audio noise. Right. So you're trying to stay as silent as you can. Uh, but it was a nice attempt. They still make this very expensive, though, against uh, Winthrop University. Look at this econ. Three guardians, half shields. Again, trying to get value out of this. They're trying to fight forward and get denied right away. 
Yeah, Infiltrator's trying to play more far forward to at least get a first kill and go down with another person. But this time, TSM's entries, their executions are just too clean. It's a double kill for seven. And the spike being planted when Throb not in position to retake. And as soon as they even try, they're just shut down immediately. I, I think this is the best and easiest part of my job where I don't have time to do any analysis So because <laughs> the action is always instant. So I'm just, once I see the barriers come up, I'm going to instantly pass you the microphone in the middle of a sentence, even if I'm still doing color, because TSM is going to go in for a plant, right? All of them, once again, basic stuff. Get into a site, death ball, perfect trades. The trips aren't even working against them where Winthrop is trying to place it in a oh, correct the read to have to write the, the right numbers to try to get these kills and it doesn't even work. Oh. Okay. Stomping away. Dimensional drift. Out of moves. Position themselves behind. Wait for the timing. Wait for the call for Winthrop to pinch from the front. But deciding to not go for it, not take the teleport. TSM a little bit shaken from that, but when Moves has gone for flanks like that, it was always a proto that has had his number. TSM now taking a second around the corner will be Gucci. To, at least he's protected by the, the Viper wall there, but, yeah, but TSM slowing things down. Th this is the first time that they slow things down, but they still have so much utility in the end, right? So it just makes it so difficult there to play that, that uh, part of Bricks. So a nice little stop and go and at least it's traded out instantly by Infiltrator, where Seven cannot get too much value anymore to help the team get in the site. He's been so good on these oh. trades. Hunter's Fury from the very back of the site from Jerk. And... Oh, maybe actually that was poised. And that was to clear sight. TSMR established, but on the flank is Infiltrator with three of this round. Dashes away from Poised. And TSM, oh wait, Poised could clutch. Light up against Nasty, but Poised didn't have enough health to deal with. So, Winthrop take a round. Thankfully, TSM just wanted to stick to the script that it's a 9-3 curse. We're finally going to see a close game, but it definitely looked like TSM was... Once again, just in the driver's seat uh, of their attacking side. I love that Winthrop University for the last three rounds tried to press it forward against TSM, though. We saw those aggressive pushes out towards A main, what Infiltrator tried to do towards B main, and then the Hunter's Fury off the rip at the beginning of the A shop to get a good feel of how TSM is trying or where they're trying to hit at the beginning of these rounds, where eventually it allowed for uh, Infiltrator to, no pun intended here, really get behind enemy lines. See, I, I, I didn't say the pun, but still got it behind enemy lines to get two kills with that Guardian, which was huge. So great do, uh, greatly done there by Winthrop University to give some sort of a chance for them here on the attacking side. But this is where we saw and where we're talking about the strength here of this double duel is to really foil the plans and the positioning and the util of TSM on the defense. So can they get it done now for Winthrop University? Can they start winning the most important pistol round of their series? TSM have won all pistols in this series and you hope that the double duel is going to give Winthrop... A good kick in the big behind because the offenses did not work in the last one, but TP from moves and his clone is just crossing up a proto. It's hilarious. And you obviously don't want to shoot that one. And moves is not even done. He will solo the site if he has to. And Winthrop can plant B. And they're actually all, uh, able to use even a pincer maneuver, right? Both duelists on different sides. So you have a jet and a cypher working the halls while Moobs does all the entry on his own. And you saw that value. We always talk about, oh, Yor is always good against a cypher, but you saw the real value there. The clone continuously gets hit by the trip so that people could get behind it. And then he just wins his fight against a proto. Very nicely done. They have a two player advantage on a pulse plan and also in great position to cut the rotation on from the A site. Oh, but Sim. Coming through the bottom side, it's a win for seven, and the trade there, assistance from TSM's third, now have equalized the numbers. Sim exposed themselves and at least picks up the one, but was hoping the rest of TSM would pinch in that moment, but now know where Winthrop could be holding from, and it's a big win for Jerk to get Winthrop on the board. I like it. Uh, at least there was the last few players uh, as a last resort here for Win Winthrop University that's able to win this one for the attack side. But if not, that would, when I mentioned those two great positions from Infiltrator and Nasi at the top of the nest to cut these rotates, I only saw one player just fighting a 1v1 against seven on that bridge. Where was that double swing? Where was the help? 
uh, where was the communication really to try to play what you're good at, those fundamentals to do that two versus one and almost guaranteeing two versus zero uh, every, um, almost every single time here for Winthrop University. So that was a, a little bit of, of a fumble, but thankfully at least they still close the round. So they got that pistol round and they have a chance here to really fight back in the second half. Heard the orb getting tapped and they wanted to punish and they come out on top. Not exchange. Winthrop are still hanging around. It's just a standoff in this A hallway. And the spike is down. And Nasi is kind of far away, but manages to get it. And Sim at half health doesn't want to challenge unless a GMD or a proto would be closer. So gonna let Nasi make the move first. And he got the perfect timing all the way. So he'll at least get the plant. But again, it's a three versus one bulldog against three shares, but it's still the three best players with the shirt that you could ask for. And there you go. <laughs> Instant wow, one fast. tap on Tanasi and they'll get the diffuse in. I just, uh, I, I have been shaking my head the whole time that round. One single flash that came out there from seven blinded all three players, including moves that TP'd up to try to get four position to help his teammates to fight against TSM. Somehow out of the TP, the flash affected him and Sim killed them on top of that. And as we as we were breathing some hope uh, into Winthrop University's pistol round win, they instantly get ecoed uh, and now are forced to decide if they want to just gamble and, and force by and, and w try to win the rest or just try to play it safe. And using the ladder is a little bit better at this point because TSM are not necessarily yeah. at serious point yet. Yeah. So there's still some breathing room, but Winthrop's yeah, definitely jump. getting suffocated now in the second half. Jerk one away from the Hunter's Fury. This could be, they can get that pick. They can get an orb. They, they'd be able to clear sight. Because TSM playing real close to those doors, seeing who would want to tap that orb from Winthrop. But look at this push from Winthrop all the way to the back corridor, using the clone to go forward and will not be fooled he gets two and the wind drop the, the creative flank did not work out and even going through the front won't work either wind drop have to play a two versus three it's not impossible but one of them has a sheriff so best of luck hunter's fury coming out of jerk steven gets some initial damage to set up his teammate but Gucci just chokes in the end and so do the rest of Winthrop as TSM go up to 11. And you've done some damage with the eco that you have for Winthrop, but I mean, you got you got ecoed. This is still great money for TSM right now in the bank. Sim, even on top of that, has Bladestorm so that he can get an operator later on as well. Maybe even in the next round if they if they win this one here. And Sim is just going on on fire here with Bladestorm kills. But this is this is something that I oh, wish shit. I saw a little bit more for Winthrop on that first half. What TSM is currently doing in that A main pressure. Uh, yes, they were playing against Ecos uh, once again at that point here for TSM. But the confidence that they have to continue to try to dash forward and put Sim in a one and done position, but still has support from um, from his teammates around uh, like seven, for example it still works out well for them to just contest and contain this A site. And now you've gone through so many rounds already where you're at potentially serious point and losing here for Winthrop, and you haven't had a chance to really engage to figure out how TSM is currently playing the rest of the map, right? How are they holding middle? How are they holding A holes? How are they holding the B site? We've only seen that on piss round that moves was able to get an entry with. Why not try to go back into fighting that B site where you're getting good value out of the Yoru clone to break that trip, break that util, and work as a group. And off this timeout, they still want to try to contest against TSM, so they're they're feeling confident that they could fight against this, but not and trying to use this util for B. And we've never seen like Winthrop play a Yoru, and they're trying different things. I love that Moobs is making the solo plays if he has to, and we'll bring a friend through this corridor. This time, TSM or Sim next? wants to make sure that this won't be a free path. Sim being aggressive with the blade storm all the way into spawn. But Winthrop just cut behind him and Winthrop have the first kill. Infiltrator makes their way into A, puts the pressure onto someone like Poise to fall back. And Sim is kind of stuck in the middle of all of this and Winthrop don't even know he's there. Moves will be causing a havoc into the people that are rotating from B. Not that great, though. Oh, we got over it. Sim got over it. He could actually get the backstab with the Bladestorm. Oh, 
jerk. Uh, you also hear where jerk is. Sim. It's jerk on the other side of this pyramid, but poised up against moves. And it's a two versus one in favor of Winthrop. An important win to not let TSM get to round point. And it is being planted. Sim Spike planted. is cutting noise. One they don't know. Sets up the double kill and Sim delivers. The whole time, they didn't have to worry about the flank because Nasi was still alive and having a trip up towards the hulls. Which no matter what, Sim got over that one. So they had a great Come read on. to put the trip in case of a hulls push. Yet... They probably didn't think an updraft probably could have gotten over that. And unfortunately, it was their demise in the end. Yes, they looked at it. They looked out towards the A main once they lost their cypher. But by then, Sim was already inside the site. And this, for Poise to be left on an island at 7 HP, battling for his life at Orange and at Staircase, and still gets two before he dies to allow Sim to get that backstab, it just comes to show that the confidence has been deflated from Winthrop since the TSM run on that first half. And the Winthrop offenses are are still being developed. And Sim was elusive like that entire round. Like he was just going all over the place. Yeah. But Winthrop, it's a different approach. Not going directly to A, not directly to B, but finally seeing some mid presence to change up and see, will TSM want to be over eager? Do they want to push out first? Can Winthrop get a first kill on their hands? That really could help tilt the scales. The answer is no, <laughs> but they'll try. They'll they'll have uh, a proto Copa's spawning. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, they'll find like there's a little bit of a, a mix up at least this time for Winthrop, right? A little bit of a balance, a little bit of mid control. But again, we talk about the aggression that TSM's currently doing here on the A side. Now that it's not being contested, Sim's able to be able to get behind enemy lines and get this first pick and potentially the win against Gucci here. Winthrop, oh, in trouble. They had initial pick at B. Didn't have the spike because Gucci heard the flank out of Sim, but now that that Sim has been shut down, finally the spike can make its way towards the objective, but Seven will just not allow it. TSM have three still up. Match point, series point, seconds left. and it's all up to Gucci who has the pit. And on the left wall will be Seven with his ult too, and playing safe at the back is poised with a Hunter's Fury. All odds are against Gucci at that moment. Defenders Turns win. at the wrong time and TSM take the win. And even if you waited that long for that last kill, there was still a Hunter's Fury available from Poise. So just unlucky there with what was left and what Gucci had to play against. Yes, he won that fight against Sim, but Sim did all that job there to really not allow Wintham University to get any map control on their first defaulting round. So that was just unlucky, but very, very well done by TSM towards the end. I got to say, though, Winthrop, you just ended my 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 friendship with GMD because GMD told me that if G the TSM wins, he's not my friend anymore. Uh, so mm. TSM, very one sided uh, second map here, unfortunately. Yeah, very one sided triad. We got our predictions right, though, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I said alone again. What I, what I really <laughs> care about is, can we make a, a prediction check with Vans right now? I, I want to see Vans. I'm sorry, I forgot. What was your prediction? Yeah, I had Winthrop, but what's the overall? Am I doing better than you? No, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Let's do that check as well. Let's do that check as well. Why are you do that check as well? No, but it was, look, it was a, it was a 2-0 for TSM, and map number one was so much closer we talked about it that first map that we got to see uh it was it was a lot of back and forth in the first half but it really as you guys are saying it seemed like when it came down to the second half when the advantage was already so heavy for tsm it Winthrop was not playing the same. They didn't look confident. The, the tools they can use with the Yoru, for example, or the entries with the jet, we started seeing less and less. And it just, every single chance, it seems like faded away. Yeah. And, and that, again, we talked about the winning condition throughout this whole series for Winthrop University was to actually have to win Lotus, right? Despite we not, us, us sorry, not having really any tape on Winthrop University playing on Breeze. We still had an inkling here that it was going to be a very tough matchup to play against Sims 
a jet. I mean, look at him. He's already at 20 and 9. He's got yeah. op kills. He's got blade storm kills. He's got rifle kills. He's got full map control as a duelist playing as if he was on the attack side. I mean, that was very difficult there for Winthrop University to really get a good gauge playing against TSM despite TSM winning in like overtime against, what was it, the Glazers, if I'm not mistaken, at that point. Yes. So there was a lot of tape against TSM, but unfortunately not enough game plan to really um, uh, to put an application mm -hmm. once they got inside the server. So that probably was that biggest thing. This was going to be a, a toss away no matter what here for Winthrop to lose that second map, but they had to win that first map on Lotus to have any type of winning chance to win the series and, and upset mm -hmm. TSM at that point. I, I was surprised to see Winthrop just come out so short on the defense especially because that was their strength even on map number one and I would have liked to see them just prevent the entries from TSM because like me and you and me and Vans were like oh well the round starts TSM have already planted and yeah. like yeah <laughs> We so kind of, like, we're trying to be at the front door and we're trying <laughs> to take risks at some points, but just never got those first picks to to prevent TSM from just walking in and owning the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just want to add. Yes, definitely. When we were casting that first half of TSM on the attack, I thought Knights just added more budget to add like six replay <laughs> operators because it was the same map and the same execution every single time that just was in favor of TSM. <laughs> it just every single time. Yeah, and, and that was part of it. There was a couple of different ideas, but it seems like they... TSM were never really contested when it came to taking sight, taking the first kill. And even in the couple rounds where we saw Winthrop get the first kill, it was like nothing. It was actually even more motivating for TSM <laughs> to go in and turn it around, get so many clutches. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the last rounds, the Sim just going all the way around, getting the last, just <laughs> denying every single chance that Winthrop thought they had. And that is obviously uh, the motivating for them, but you, you can really see in the way that they were playing the, the strategies and and the ideas when when you think and you're running something different which is something that Winthrop is not used to you're running something new you're running something different you're trying to to get value out of it and it just gets denied every time and, and for Winthrop I think it's gonna be a lot of series like this of continuing to work continue to evolve and being the team of collegiate people put them in either the worst team or the best team and, and they're not none of them right they're right in between their learning and they're getting these experiences uh but uh there's going to be a lot more needed for sure and just to add to that i think that's the silver lining too of winthrop university despite them getting demolished on that second map playing this new composition that we haven't seen this split that's something that winthrop is very strong bouncing back right like when they actually yeah. brought that double duelist with uh, with Arena on Icebox and they yeah. didn't get too much value out of that, Move still decide to run it the next time they played in an Icebox, I think in the qualifiers and just drop like higher than 20, if I'm not mistaken, in, in that game. So they're able to min-max off what they've learned and perfect a little bit more. And maybe that going back to the drawing board, it's yeah, maybe, maybe us playing the retake type style with this composition on defense is not the play. How can we fight for it? We have a lot of utility to be able to do that and they might be able to take advantage of that next time. It's going to be more work to be done, but for TSM, they're going to be celebrating. We're going to throw it to a serious highlight to see everything that just happened. And when we come back, we have an interview with one of the TSM players. ASM, BSM.
remaining. They say in life, there are no guarantees. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bets. So what? You gonna listen to that? You gonna stop? Because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win. No guarantee everything's gonna be fine. You make your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime. Welcome back, everybody. In case you missed it, we just watched TSM take a 2-0 victory against Winthrop University. And now it is time for the post-match interview. I'm joined this time around by Seven, who I have a couple questions, Seven, about this win. First of all, I, I gotta say, I really like your background. Uh, congratulations on the win. And now for my actual question, uh, the first thing I want to say is, well, first match that you had was against M80. The second one was against the Glacers. So the first one you lose, you had a close map. The second one, you, you take the win against the Glacers. This one, to the audience, to the people watching, really felt like the, the real test for TSM. How did you feel coming to this match? Um, I think like, Obviously, our first match against Amity was a tough one. Um, we're still relatively like a newer team, I think, compared to most of the other challenger teams. Um, is we just kind of go week by week. So no matter who we're playing, no matter like, you know, what's happened in the past, like we're taking our practice week by week, we're always improving. And um, we came to this match really confident. Um, even though we thought we were the better team, we still played very disciplined. We still like played to our best. And uh, I think it showed. Yeah, it showed with the 2-0, especially that second map was just dominating for you guys. And, and I want to ask you uh, something that I, I've been having on my mind since you guys made this team is uh, you have a player like you who has been in the past playing a lot of Sentinel, continues to play that Sentinel role. You have a Proto as well, and you have Sim who has a playstyle that it is sometimes a lot around the map control with the operator uh it that by itself just in paper it seems like you guys would be a very passive team but you're quite the opposite sometimes so how do you define the team when it comes to aggression and and being passive and understanding the read of those rounds um i think it mainly comes down to our caller i think kev does a really good job at like he understands that we're like you say we're a passive team but i kind of disagree i think we're actually a pretty aggressive team um yeah yeah it does it, it seemed like in paper with the roles, you guys would be passive, but you're not passive at all. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I think we just like, you know, we're very confident in our aim, like all of us. And I think our IG understands that and he kind of allows us to, you know, take more of those aggressive duels, take more of those aggressive plays because he believes that we can win on top. And I think that's kind of how we've been like playing and it's been working out pretty well for us. It's been looking really good. And I want to ask you, since you are one of the players that were part of TSM last year, can you tell us how you compared the TSM last year to this year? Um, I think this year we're really locking down on practice. Not that we didn't practice last year, but I think like specifically for me, I don't know about the other players, but like this year I've been putting in a lot more work. I've been putting in, um, I don't know. I've been, I've been doing a lot more out of the server, which it was something that I wasn't really used to back then. But uh, now I think with my new team, we're more like out of the server kind of team. We're really used to VOD reviewing, uh, which I wasn't really part of back then. Um, 
now we're just taking a lot more like practice seriously. We're taking it, you know, well, and uh, we just keep on improving. And it's going really well. Now you have a 2-1 score right now for challengers in this third week. And the next two matches that you have is going to be Turtle Troop and then Sad Esports. Uh, can you give me some thoughts on how you feel about them? Um, I think they're those two are like one of the better teams in our group. Um, still, though, we're going to treat them the same as any other team. We're going to like come in full force, full practice, fully dialed in. And hopefully we come out on top. And one last question that I have for you is when we got the chance to talk to Sim, one of the things that Sim was saying was, you know, anybody can win against anybody. We're not going to be, you know, we're not going to claim that we're going to win against anybody. Do you also have the mentality? Is this the mentality of the team of, you know, even though we're confident in our game, let's let's take it one step at the time and, and, and get those wins that way? Yeah, of course. Even today, we still made a lot of mistakes, right? Like even today, we weren't a perfect team. We played well on Breeze, but our Lotus, we still had a lot of mistakes. I felt like we could have won that map a lot you know, a much more smoother game. And we're going to keep on working to improve our mistakes. We're going to keep uh, just doing our best, really. And the more that we get to see you guys, the, the better and the better you look. So I'm excited for the future of TSM. I'm excited to see more of you guys. Seven, once again, congrats, uh, congratulations on this win. And with that, that is the end of our match today. We have one more to go, though. So uh, don't go anywhere. And when we come back, we have the second match of today.